Hello, I am Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Um, today I wanted to talk about a book that I've mentioned a little bit recently in my monthly wrap up and and sort of just more generally I've, I've got quite a few thoughts on so I thought I kind of I really wanted to speak about it sort of more specifically um, and that is this book here Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. I um, mean it's published by Cypher Press who are a UK based publisher um, who uh, publish uh, queer fiction particularly yeah from kind of underrepresented LGBTQIA plus voices um, and so for example another book of theirs that I've read so far um, 100 Boyfriends by Brontes Purnell is also just incredibly exciting just for the way it tells queer stories um, in a way that we don't often see you know it, it's kind of from the two I've read so far these two here ooh, that's upside down uh, the two I've read so far uh, they're both not afraid to um, get kind of down and, and dirty and messy and really let there be queer characters who um, are kind of giving the full spectrum of their voice um, to, to their story so you know they're allowed to be messy and flawed um, there's something to be said sort of more broadly about some LGBTQ plus representation um, erring on the side of sort of safe sometimes um, and so it's really great to have um, books like these that are so unafraid and bold in the way that they they tell these stories uh, but anyway um tell me i'm worthless is a story that i really wanted to talk about um this very very nearly made it into my top books um of the year and i kind of basically consider it an addendum to it because i i kind of can't stop thinking about this book it's incredible and i was really quite impressed by it i think the the reason it didn't really end up on the list is just because i i kind of ultimately couldn't sort of feel where I sort of fell on parts of it but actually the more I'm thinking about it the more I'm realizing how much I adored this book um and it is quite uh an innovative 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 I've never said innovative before where's this coming from uh, a really innovative book uh that um I think is really clever in so so many ways so it it tells the story of um a couple um it's a um a trans woman and her and her ex um, and we kind of at the beginning of the book get a really it's, it's sort of told in alternating chapters um, of sort of you know different perspectives a sort of dual narrative throughout and we kind of early on get the, you know get little hints into why their relationship fell apart and both are accusing the other of some quite serious stuff um, it, I mean just generally in terms of content warnings uh, this book has sort of deals a lot with abuse um particularly sort of sexual assault um and it deals a lot with uh with for example transphobia uh, it's it's a dark book this is not a, a particularly easy read by any stretch of the imagination although i say that i flew through this i um at one point was sort of on a train to go to work and i realized i was a bit early and whereas i think you know normally i might be like oh maybe i'm gonna go and sit and go and do this little thing in the office and then go and sit at my desk i was like no i'm gonna sit in a cafe and i'm gonna read more of this book because i need more of this right now and um i yeah i was really blown away by it so um uh, I, I will go into some slight spoilers in a bit um, but this first little bit is going to be spoiler free so please feel free to to leave at that point if you need to um, but essentially yeah the, the sort of central story you've got these two characters who are trying to work out what their relationship had been why it kind of ended and kind of where they're up to now but but then as the story goes on we we learn more details about their relationship how things had sort of come to where they were um, and sort of how they came to to sort of be where they are and and we also learn a lot about their flaws as characters and like i said this book is not afraid to get messy with its characters neither of these sort of central characters comes out at the end looking like a saint <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination um but what is really interesting is how their various parts of their identities um link into um how they relate as people so um our sort of the the um main character who is trans um the the sort of the transphobia that kind of comes from her ex really complicates their relationship and it sort of means that um when certain things are discussed the the trans character finds it quite difficult to really understand is my ex 
doing this to spite me. Um, and uh, sort of on the flip side, the her her ex, the the, the cisgendered woman in this relationship, um, is Jewish, and um, and when there are sort of various things that come up around anti-Semitism and that again kind of complicates it of are both of these characters really just kind of causing harm to each other um sort of more, more generally out of sort of um lack of understanding like you know not understanding that talking about certain topics might upset the other one or is it intentional is this purposeful harm directed where they kind of know that they're going to be weakest um, and most vulnerable and that I thought was incredibly powerful um, and then where it kind of I'm going to go a tiny bit into spoiler territory here um, so please do feel free to, to stop um, about now um, but we then have a moment where the characters um, decide to go back to this house and I think this is where the book really kind of goes from, you know, it ramps it up from what was already an incredibly gritty and intense and overwhelming book. Um, and the characters then start exploring this idea of almost the, the haunted house is kind of um, going into their psyches or, or kind of anything like that. And given that the characters, there's sort of already quite a few references to sort of drugs and a few other things in the story. It kind of even further sort of obfuscates that idea of um, what's true and what's false, um, you know, what's sort of imagined, what is because the characters are high or, or whatever, and it just keeps pushing that. Um, and then this is where, um, I mentioned in the monthly wrap-up, it also references Angela Carter, who I adore, and Angela Carter um, is, uh, a, a, was a British writer, and she wrote a lot of uh, fairy tales, well she sort of did quite a lot of work around twisting fairy tales and kind of adding kind of interesting elements to them and what I think is really fascinating about what happens here is there is a direct reference to Angela Carter um, of sort of a character talking about liking Angela Carter and then moments later we go into a Bluebeard style story and Angela Carter's sort of take on Bluebeard is incredible um, anyway but it then basically starts kind of going into it in a really kind of meta way and at this point for me the book which I was already fully loving and was already kind of definitely in five star territory I was just like has this book been written for me <laughs> at this exact moment like an Angela Carter reference referencing Bluebeard going through all these things it's just like yeah and so it it just sort of takes off um and we do kind of start to sort of see how these characters come together to try and mend a relationship but in the meantime there are so many things that this book raises so many ideas that it raises of things that are unforgivable and that's what's so fascinating about the book is it it presents some of the harshest things the most unforgivable the most unflinching things and then at the end we watch how the characters sort of deal with some of that aftermath so i love this as you may be able to tell um and i kind of although it wasn't necessarily on my I, you know, I, I basically, I just, I urge you all to check it out. I think it's a great, it's a great book. And I, I, I kind of want more people to read it just because I want to hear people's thoughts about it. Um, because I came away from it kind of being like, what on earth did I just read? That was a ride. <laughs> um, and if you've read something like um, Eliza Clark's Boy Parts, um, that book is also incredibly unflinching, which I adored. And I, the, the sort of, there is a natural overlap there. Not, I mean, they're both very different books, but they do kind of cover some sort of similar ideas in that sense. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling about it. I've been Bob, uh, the book I'm chatting about Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. Um, really interesting to see um, such amazing kind of writing, such un uh, such bold, unflinching writing. Um, and anyway, uh, if you've read it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've read anything else by Cypher Press or anything else that sounds kind of similar, please do let me know. I'm always up for those kinds of gritty unnerving books um, and take care. See, speak to you all soon.